people. Welcome back. Another episode of the Average Guys Got to Life podcast. You know who I am. You know what this is. Okay. How you been doing? Good. Good. I've been doing all right. Not too high. Not too low. Just all right. Someone shut that fucking dog up. Please. I don't believe in animal cruelty, but can he see I'm doing something? Can't that dog see through walls right now and see that I'm doing something? Take it inside. It's cold outside. Fuck. Isn't that animal cruelty? Leave your dog outside when it's below 30 degrees? What the fuck? Anyway, hopefully you guys didn't hear that. Annoying ass canine. But yeah. I've been doing all right. Not too high. Not too low. Been kind of low. Been kind of high. But not too much of it. And by high, I mean high on life. Not high on uh, the wacky, tobacky, the reefer, the sticky, icky, the green. I don't partake. Anyway, let me not ramble on too much. I'm just here to give you guys what you want, you know, some entertainment in the middle of your week, helping you get through the, the slog and the, and the fucking muck of your week, give you something funny to listen to, keep your ears percolating, it's time for the percolating, it's time for the percolating, okay, the uh, <laughs> the Super Bowl happened this past weekend, or as I call it, the Super Blah, Super Blah 54 happened. And OK, I'll admit that I'm kind of bitter. My team didn't make it this year. I know they make it damn near every year, but they didn't make it this year. So I didn't have a dog in a race. I was just watching it as a football fan. And. This is what bothers me, okay? A lot of things bother me, as you've come to notice. But this is what bothers me about the Super Bowl, okay? It's more so about entertaining the casuals than the people that watch the 16-game season. And I get that. The casuals are what make you money. I get it. You have to make it a spectacle. You have to make it something that everyone wants to watch. Fuck, it's a national holiday as far as I'm concerned. Super Bowl Sunday. Like, now that I'm an adult, depending on who's playing, that's my Christmas. Doesn't get any better. So I get it. I get it. It's much watch TV. It's one of those things that's still appointment TV in this digital age where everything is on demand. I get it. But the thing that frustrates me is that these casuals have opinions and they're rooting, but they don't know why. I've seen all these casuals rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs. Why, though? Why? You know nothing about their team. You know nothing about their strengths, their weaknesses. You don't you don't know who's their what their strengths are as far as position players. You don't know what their weaknesses are. You don't know their game plan. All you know is that you're gonna root for the Chiefs because they're popular. Because that's what your friends are rooting for. Or the dumbest of them all. Because they have a black quarterback. That's all you're rooting for. It's just because they have a black quarterback. Motherfucker, 98% of the players on the field are black. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) Quarterback, and like, for me, the quarterback is probably the most overrated position in sports. If you ask me. Now, before you get your panties up at a bunch in your crack, all hugging your taint, and whatnot. This is why I think the quarterback is the most overrated position. Okay. Within the past five years to a decade, 
some of the most successful quarterbacks in the regular season were Dink and Dunkers. Now, for you casuals out there who don't know what Dink and Dunkers are, that's the Alex Smith special. That is the Joe Flacco special. You know, even Peyton Manning in his Denver years. That's a quarterback that doesn't do any long distance passing over 15, 20 yards. They're passing it to the check downs. They're doing five yard dinks, five yard dunks at a time. And who are they giving it to? They're skill position players, more than likely some black guy who's either very big, very fast or both. So this argument, firstly, about people rooting for Patrick Mahomes just because he's a black quarterback, motherfucker, most of the best skill positions in the league are black. Okay. And secondly, the people that have won in the past, the dink and dunkers, white guys, they were passing it to black guys. So just because the quarterback is black doesn't mean that you have to sway your opinion for this one specific position. It's overrated. A great quarterback is a rarity. There's a lot of average quarterbacks, a handful of terrible quarterbacks, and about three or four elite quarterbacks that can make all the throws. You know, so eat a dick, like eat a dick, all you people, all you fucking racists, all you racists out there <laughs> that are only rooting for that only rooted for the Chiefs because they had a black quarterback and that motherfucker barely black. Like, come on, come on, my fucking nightstand, my my pine wood nightstand is blacker than Patrick Mahomes. Get the fuck out of here. But anyway. That's one of my gripes with the Super Bowl. My other gripe is that the game was shorter than the fucking ambiance that were, was leading up to the game and the halftime show in the middle. It's more so about how can how can we get at oh, there's a fucking train? Oh, you bitch. Introducing my guest host as always. The train that's three blocks away. Come on. There you go. He says hello or she, whatever. I just assume it's a dick, you know, because that's how trains are shaped going through tunnels and whatnot. So I just assumed it was a man. But, you know, you can't know these days. But anyway, uh, the Super Bowl is about trying to get as many eyeballs on that product as they can. So I get it. I understand. So you want to you want to have the musical performances. You want to do the video montages. You want to, you know, satisfy the old heads and the young people. You want to get as many people in the room as you can satisfy all demographics. But what about the real football fans? It's like we come last when it comes to the Super Bowl. We come at the very bottom. I was having. A discussion, and when I say discussion, I mean exchanging a few Facebook comments, like literally three or four, with a friend of mine, and who who said this was like one of the best Super Bowls that they remember. And I'm like, really? Like I've seen at least twenty of them, at least, and I've seen the entire 2019-2020 regular season. And if you take away all of the whipped cream on this Sunday, if you take away all of the, the the window dressing as a football game, strictly as a football game, four quarters, 60 minutes, it wasn't that great. There were several reg regular season games that were better than the Super Bowl, if you ask me. And this isn't me talking as a bitter fan. Like like I said, I have no dog in this race. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. I am more ecstatic for Andy Reid finally getting him one after all of his 
excellence coaching in the league, you know, all the winning seasons he's had. So that's the person that I am more uh, happy for, Andy Reid. And people can stop all this fucking ridiculous talk about a dynasty. Like, dynasties don't happen in football, but I've already ranted on that topic, okay? But, um, what was I talking about? Shit. Now I lost my own train of thought. What the fuck was I talking about? Well, uh, it was something about, what was it? I was, I was going off on Patrick Mahomes and the Super Bowl and... There's 60 minutes. Okay, so (laughs) I literally lost my train of thought because I was ranting about this too long. Oh, yeah, this isn't me as a (laughs) this isn't me as a bitter sports fan. Okay, because my team didn't make it. I'm just talking strictly with the eyeball test about games that I've seen this season versus the, the game of the Super Bowl, not everything around it, just the game itself. And there were plenty of games that were better than that one. I'm just saying. We had shootouts. We had defensive struggles. Um, we had, you know, second half comebacks. It, I mean, the game was kind of slow to me. In the beginning, it was 10-10 going into the half, you know. Um, but then Kansas City came back. After San Francisco got another touchdown and a um, field goal. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. In my lifetime, I could like regular season playoffs and Super Bowls all combined. That probably wouldn't even make my top 50 games. For a game to me on a scale from one to 10, it would be right in the middle. It would be a five game. And not just saying because I, I I was rooting for someone to win. I mean I wanted San I wanted um, Kansas City to lose be, to to just bury this narrative that they were dynasty bound. Uh, but I'm not mad that they won. I'm just speaking truthfully as a sports observer. What my eyeballs saw in that moment. Okay. And what my eyeballs are telling me now is that I've been talking for almost 13 minutes and I haven't said anything funny yet. Chip, my bad. Uh, uh, Dick butts. How about that? That's funny. Uh, (laughs) um, The UFC also has an event this weekend finally coming up. Last weekend, we didn't have one. I always hate when we miss a weekend of fighting. I like to watch people kick each other in the face it is very entertaining but we have a fight with John Jones versus Dominic Reyes and that's going to be on pay-per-view John Jones versus Dominic Reyes I'm not particularly looking forward to this fight why because I think Dominic Reyes is just a above average fighter, but not on the level of John Jones. And I might go into a deep analysis of this later, maybe. But my bullet points are as follows. OK. If you are a MMA UFC fan um, and just a casual fan, not. Not even a hardcore fan, but you know who John Jones is. Like, you're a little bit above average. You know who John Jones is, and you know fighting. Like, you see it. Even as that sort of casual fan, you can see that Dominic Reyes is a good fighter, but you can't name one element of fighting that you think he is better than John Jones at. You just can't. John Jones is a competent striker, an unusual striker. He hasn't done that in his recent bouts, but you know he has the capability to be unorthodox and unpredictable with his striking. There's no there's nothing in his striking repertoire that he can't do. He could do low kicks, high kicks, leg 
leg kicks, oblique kicks, spinning back elbows. He has a good long reach. Okay. Dominic Reyes, what is what is his resume on in striking look like? You know, he's knocked out some guys, but he hasn't knocked out anyone in that upper echelon. So you got to give John Jones the nod there in grappling. Once again, you haven't seen Dominic Reyes dominate someone on the grappling aspect. But John Jones had two fights with Daniel Cormier. The first fight, he took DC down. And if you don't know who Daniel Cormier is, Daniel Cormier is an Olympic caliber wrestler. One of the best grapplers to ever grace a mix, uh, mixed martial. One of the best grapplers to ever grace an octagon. Let me just say that. Damn. Fuck, I can't speak English. The hell? <laughs> Since when was I not able to speak English? Okay. Now, long story short, everything that Dominic Reyes does, John Jones does better. So if he were to win this fight, it would be equivalent to Chris Whiteman knocking out Anderson Silva. It would be equivalent to um, GSP getting knocked out by Matt Serra. It would be one of those type of upsets. I wouldn't say it would be like when Holly Holmes head kicked Ron Rousey because Holly Holmes is a world class kickboxer and anyone that wasn't a moron Knew that if Ronda had a chance, she needed to take that fight to the ground. And when she didn't, eh, head kick. So, anyway, let me not bore you too much with the fucking sports talk. I really just wanted to get that out the way to get to the fun stuff, the sexist stuff, the the uh, the dumb shit that I really enjoy talking about. I feel like I have to talk about sports because that's such a huge part of my life at this moment, at this very moment. How I consume things, I consume a lot of sports and I know a lot of people out there consume sports. So I want to satisfy you. I want to masturbate you just a little bit. Lube my hand up nice and wet with some sports talk and jacket. Just jack it until you get the sports jizz out of you. That's all I want to do. So as we all know, now that I've gotten that ejaculation out of the way, and you're feeling all good with my sports ranting. But as we all know, Valentine's Day, it's around the corner. It's peeking around the corner. It's following you to your house. It's asking you, did you buy flowers? Did you buy flowers? Did you buy shiny things and balloons and stuffed animals for your loved one? Did you? If you didn't, you're a loser. Consume. Buy this shit. Prove that you love them. Prove it, or else you'll be shamed. You'll be shamed by your loved one, and you'll be shamed by your friends. Consume. Buy a card with a heart on it. What does a heart have to do with Valentine's Day? Don't act. Just do it. Buy roses that smell nice. With a bear that if were real would devour you. Do it. Anyway. Uh, Valentine's Day. Looking like your boy's gonna be at it. By his lonesome this year. You know. I'm so lonely. Oh so lonely. I have nobody. To call my own. Woo. So. I'm fine with that. That's fine. More money in my pockets. Uh, I'm not spending it on no hooker. And no whore. Was probably out there doing dicks, sucking dicks, fucking dicks. Uh, I'm fine with that. Um, does it suck a little bit? Yeah, you know, loneliness. I'm human. You know, my chemistry, my biology. I, 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 I want to be in the warmth of some tits. You know, I want to be spooning some poon. 
course, of course, that is um, a part of the human condition. You crave the other gender when you don't have it, when you when you need one. I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit too, but I'm fine with being alone on this Valentine's Day. Uh, get some reflection done, you know, I'm going to read, I'm going to find myself, you know, I'm going to experiment a little bit, might do a little bit of cocaine, you know, I heard it, get rid of the coronavirus, you know, I thought just switching to Bud Light would get rid of the coronavirus, that joke fell flat, uh, now I know not to try that one out, but, Big butts. Love big butts. That's what I'm craving. But, uh, <laughs> but like, when did that happen? When, like, we as a we as a culture just decided that butts and asses were the thing, like, a, like a decade ago, maybe over a decade ago. It was like ass. Like, in my culture, we always knew that ass was the thing. Like, I'm black, black man. And if you didn't have no ass, you would just pass. No ass, pass. Period. You know, skinny girls didn't get no love when I was growing up. You know, I appreciate a nice skinny ass now. I mean, not too skinny. Not like, you know, coffee table legs skinny. But, you know, in shape, curvaceous, you know, nice little petite butt. But when I was growing up, ass, you know, you had to have ass. Even if it was a big fat biscuit ass, you had to have ass. But now it's like everywhere. It's fucking everywhere. And I know this topic has probably been beaten to death by hundreds of millions of comedians and hundreds of millions of podcasts. But it's just my two cents. It's just weird now. Just weird to see so much ass everywhere. So much ass. It's like they like they get on the fucking train when black people have been on it for the beginning of time. It's like we've been on that train, fucker, since we were in Africa. You know? We've been on that ass train. And everybody want to get on now for the past 15, 15 years, you know, not even 15. I would say about 12, 11, 12 years. Everyone's got on the ass train, you know, taking pictures of it, injecting shit in it, putting balloons filled with silicone in it and taking shit out of their body and injecting it in their ass, you know. Just odd. But anyway, let me not digress too much longer. Um, yeah, going to be spending this Valentine's Day by myself. But I want to know what you guys think is appropriate. Like, what do you think is, a, is appropriate for a Valentine's Day outing or a Valentine's Day gift? You know, depending on your circumstance. Is it is it cliche to just give the chocolates and the roses and the stuffed animal? Do you feel obligated to go above and beyond? Valentine's Day has been strictly a you give to women holiday. You man, empty your pockets, buy something for this girl holiday. You know, so I, I don't think there's there's too many men that's getting anything. I've never gotten anything for Valentine's Day. Fuck, I've never gotten anything for Sweetie's Day, but this is not me being better. I'm not better. I'm fine. Kinda. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, what what is it like? Are you the type of person that thinks Valentine's Day is just another way for uh, companies to get you to consume so you don't partake? Are you fine with doing the cliche things, flowers, chocolates, bears, cards, or do you feel like you need to do more? Maybe some jewelry romantic dinner me it always depend depended on the person i was with i am a minimalist by choice i think extravagant things living beyond your means when you don't need to is unnecessary if you can and it is not something that is making you bend or break then by all means but if you're an average person an average guy like me, it's unnecessary. So I try to make my gifts more sentimental, 
maybe a hand-drawn sketch of a portrait we took together, or a card I made myself accompanied by some flowers, not just the typical roses, just some assorted flowers, you know, or something I know you liked, something I know you wanted. I treated it as basically an extra birthday. Like women get two birthdays a year for some fucking reason, along with Christmas. Don't even get me started on that shit. But women get two designated birthdays. They got Valentine's Day and they got their actual birthday. So I treated it as, okay, whatever the fuck I wasn't going to get you on your birthday, I'm going to get you on Valentine's Day. This is basically a second place gift. Okay, on your birthday, you're going to get the first place gift. On Valentine's Day, you're going to get the second place gift. So on your birthday, I gave you that pair of earrings that you really wanted. You know, very expensive earrings. But on Valentine's Day, you know, I'm getting you some shit I drew. It cost me nothing. But it comes from the heart. Sentimental value, man. You can't throw that away. Anyway. I want to know what you guys say. But getting back to uh, what I was saying earlier about biology, right? How how you crave shit. I think I was talking about that. How, you know, when you're away from the opposite sex and you don't have one in your life, you crave it. And if you're on Facebook, this shit's gotten rampant. Like, you can tell the motherfuckers out here that ain't got none in a while. Women, too. You can tell. Posting these gifts. These inappropriate gifts of cunnilingus. These inappropriate gifts of someone getting bent over. Women do it, too. Y'all motherfuckers need some attention. Okay? Men do it in other ways. They're just creepy about it. You know, they add some random person that's in their friend suggestions and post on their timeline for the world to see. Hey, beautiful. How you doing? How he looking like a fist. With no shame. A fist with glasses. I just described myself. <laughs> no, but uh, I don't do that. I don't I don't post on people's timelines like what the fuck? No one's that important. Like, right, come on. Especially for. Me to tell you something that I want everyone to see? Like, what the fuck? I mean, I have no shame, but that's that's on another level. That's on another level, you know? And people be posting wild shit, too. Like, hey, I'm going to eat your ass, like, with whipped cream and caramel, you know? Make a regular butthole sundae. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, uh, people that, <laughs> people need each other, okay? When the opposite sex, or whatever your gender, or whatever your preference is, like, whatever your loins crave, like, whatever you want to fuck, whatever you want to st stick into or have stuck into you, like, whatever, I don't give a fuck. But whatever you crave, if you're away from it for a while, it itches at you. And... I think pretty much every person out there knows what I'm talking about. Specifically, my male listeners. And I don't like to isolate women and just alienate you guys. But maybe you, you feel this too. Maybe you have been down this path as well. But when men hit puberty... Not only is it a physical change and a biological change in your body, but something happens that changes us to a, from a mild-mannered, happy-go-lucky kid that plays with action figures and likes to climb on the monkey bars to a raging addict who's never had what they crave. It's like wanting... Dope. Having never injected yourself. And you know what I mean. Like as soon as you hit 14, 15 years old. Like at 14 and 15. The, the thoughts start to linger. And you start to look. And you start to be like. Hmm. Tits. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hips. That's doing a little something down there. But it's still just a lingering. You're starting to get the thought. When around 16, 17, you're like, hmm. Tits. Hmm. Hips. And now the the the, the fucking urge for the dope. <laughs> now the urge for the crack and the cocaine is starting to, to, to build up. And by the time you're 18, 19, let me just say 17 to 19. Excuse me. Okay. From 17 to 19. You're basically a raging drug addict. You do anything to fuck. Anything. Anything. You don't give a shit. You don't give a shit. You don't care what's popular. You're doing it. You don't care how people talking. You talking like that now. You just don't give a fuck. Anything to make them look at you and be like, yeah, I might fuck that guy. Yes, that's what I want. (laughs) Like, you'd go to any fucking length. If you lived in Chicago and someone that would potentially fuck you live in Indiana, you making that trip. You might even ditch school to make that trip. Fuck might. You will ditch school to make that trip. Why? Because you're fucking. And you need the crack. You need it. Crack. I just got it. Uh but you need the crack, butt crack. That's what I was talking about, ass crack. Um, you need it. You fucking need it. And I don't know if that's something women will understand. Like, women, I think it happens differently for you all. You start to see your body develop. And you start to get those hips. And you start to get those tits. And you start to get that butt butt. And you're starting to accentuate yourself you're starting to be like oh i like this i like that my body is turning into this you know and you start to see at the same time those guys start to look so you're like oh i like this attention i like the i like the way that i'm being admired as long as it's not in a creepy over aggressive kind of way you know you just like it you like the attention and you also know what this attention is because of You know it's because you're developing or you have developed. And the guys that's in your age age range, you know, you're like, well, I like him too. You know, he's starting to develop. You know, he ain't so scrawny anymore. So maybe women feel the same way, but I don't think it's that overpowering urge that men have. Like men would do some weird, weird shit to get off. I shit you not. I'm a man. I should know. Like, <laughs> like those movies that you see, like American Pie with um, Jason Biggs literally fucking a pie. That's not too far off. That's not too far off of what a man would do in that time frame from 17 to 19 to fuck. Like maybe someone out there is penetrating a, a cherry pie to feel that gooey shit. You know, it's just an uncontrollable thing. And I myself have done some things that I would not do. And I know a lot of people in my age range that were raised around the same area on the west side of Chicago. that were participating in the same shit just to fuck like nowadays. I mean, now that we're adults. We still do, but it's different. You know, there's obligations and priorities and things that come before trying to satisfy your sexual desires. Like, you know, you got your bills, you got your mortgage, you got your your car. Maybe you have family responsibilities, medical responsibilities, all this. But still, you know, you have to keep yourself together, presentable, suave, you know, because, you know, no matter where you are outside in the world, You could attract a potential mate if you're single. So now that we're adults, that's how it goes. But back then we didn't have shit. We had school and home and homework and recreational activities. But that didn't take up all your time. So what are you doing with most of your time? You're trying to fuck. 
<laughs> so what do you do? You try and do the things that the girls find attractive. Okay? And back then it was dumb as fuck. What did we do? We wore shirts that were five times bigger than what we were. This is not an exaggeration, folks. We used to go to school with parachutes on our torsos. Parachutes. Like if we jumped from the top of the school, we would be fine. Giant fucking pants. Giant pants that we didn't even wear on our waist. They were already too big, but they used to hang off our ass. With do-rags and headbands. Not separately. Together. A do-rag with a headband. <laughs> or the button-ups. You know, the button-up dress shirts with the, the steel too big. They're still too big. And also the big parachute pants. They weren't actually parachute pants like MC Hammer in the 80s and all that shit. I mean, like, they were just big-ass pants. You know? You should do whatever it fucking takes. You want to look the part. Even though it was fucking dumb. Like, looking back, I don't know why a woman would be attracted to that. Like, what the fuck? You know, wear clothes that fit you. You could fit three of you in your outfit. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? But not only that, you know, you 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 play a part. You act a certain way. Even if you know, like, motherfucker, you in all honors classes. Why are you talking like you a GD? Why are you talking like you a vice lord? Bitch, didn't I just see you in advanced calculus? Like, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. Sit your ass down somewhere. Talking about some O'Neal. Shut the fuck up, on Finn. You little bitch, you know Spanish. Like, you literally know it. I cheated to pass this class, motherfucker. You could say whole sentences and shit. Why are you talking like you a goddamn Latino king? Sit your ass down somewhere, motherfucker. But that's what we did. That's what we did, women. There's a raging monster inside of each teenage boy. I shit you not. So if you have boys out there, just be prepared. They will go lengths. You have to give them the weapons to succeed. And by that, I mean a slew of condoms. Because they're going to do it without you anyway. They will go to lengths. They will fucking walk to Canada if they have to. They will walk. They will fucking walk. They will literally get a passport. They will have documents forged to get a fake passport to enter Canada to fuck. Okay? That's how strong the monster is. Shit, I was... No, nah, okay, I'm not even gonna say that. I'm gonna save that for Freaky Freaky Friday. I know I haven't been doing them lately. Um... I wanted to make it a, more of a special occasion thing. And I'm still debating on setting it up as a live thing. Um, maybe show you my pretty, pretty face one of these days. So that's why the Freaky Freaky Fridays have slowed down a little bit. That's going to be something that I want my listeners out there to be looking forward to. Okay, I might change it back to a weekly occurrence depending on uh, how quickly I can get things edited and just produced and out to you guys but I'm a one man show okay you gotta fucking be patient with me don't don't be pressuring me to do shit bro I'm trying to stay positive with you right now you need to get the fuck off my back okay step back a little bit step back a little bit you're gonna get it okay you're going to get your fucking Freaky Fridays. Any strudel. That's the show for today. Have a lovely, lovely day, my beautiful, beautiful people. And I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.